you. Welcome to your day off. My name is Corinne. Of course, sitting with my best bud, Tony. What's up, man? What's up, brother? So we uh, once again we're at BTC and um, where are we? National Harbor. National Harbor. And yeah. DC, right? <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> um, and we're these in Kansas are, City, Kansas. <laughs> yeah, who knows? KC, <laughs> DC. Um, and these events are cool because we get to like talk to cool people because they all come, right? Yeah, and uh, today's guest, it's uh, she has a actually a, a really cool story. I can't wait. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's. Uh, it, I, I'm really looking forward to getting diving deep into her story, mm-hmm. and uh, I don't know. I, I just I'm ready to go. Yeah, let's do it. Um, I mean, I, I want to say just a little something that um, we actually uh, we've already interviewed her husband, so there's a little tease. Ah. There's a little tease, but um, she was just remarkable and just amazing. On on um, she was just very sweet about about helping us coordinate it, and um, you know, you know, her husband isn't exactly easy to get, so. It was just, she was just very, very cool coordinating it. And then... Um, she was actually in the middle of a color uh, when we... Uh, I think it was a platinum card. It was <laughs> more right? than a color, like the first time we met. She right? even paused out and, and came and gave us a hug and, and yeah. just made sure we, we were comfortable there. And yeah, I mean... She's she's amazing. And even in that, even in those moments, like she was like teaching us like about how she does her platinum card and about how she does it. And then she sent us text all day about like how it was coming along. I thought that that was incredible. Like I yeah. felt like a little kid. Like what? Mary's talking to me. Yeah. That's pretty Who? cool. Who? Who? Yeah. So uh, uh, slick. <laughs> slick. slick. I know, right? So uh, on our podcast today, we have Miss Mary Cromines, um, and uh, I can't wait to get in because she she intrigues me. Yeah, totally. Should we do it? Yep. Introduce her. So, Mrs. Mary Crow means. Thank you very much for joining us on your day off. Thank you for having me. Those yeah. are such kind words. I'm blushing. I don't even right. know what to say. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, we we very excited. Thank you so much for joining us. And Mary, that that was that was truth. I mean, like when we let when we left there, we just like we we're like, man, that was really cool. And like Mary just, you know, it was just a, it was a it was a weird thing. You know, we walk in and like there's four other people in the salon. There's you know the Rob, salon owner, the salon right, owner, yeah. the salon owner, the model, you and Robert, and like we walk walk in and and, and and maybe Robert made fun of us, maybe he didn't. I'm not just gonna throw him under the bus like that. But it, it was just really cool. And like he did. He, he totally did. <laughs> I um, think he might have, but it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. But he just like he you made us feel very welcome in that oh, that cool. situation. You kind of have to imagine we were all like pretty uptight in there. Anyways, and we just came in on a train, which was crazy too. But thank uh, you. Yeah, but dude, that's awesome. Th- no, thank you. Really. Um, dude, welcome. Thank you for doing this. This is really, really cool. I'm excited about it. So before we talk about Mary Cromains, can we talk about Mary Cromo? Yep, let's do that. All right. Where did you where, where did you grow up? I grew up in upstate New York, a place called Schenectady. You want me to spell that for you? Y- yeah, you're <laughs> gonna have to because I can I, I won't pronounce it. That's for sure. S C H E N E C T A D Y. Oh my gosh. What is it? You have to put that on like your envelope, like when you send mail and you stuff? You can do an abbreviation, S-C-H apostrophe D-Y. Oof. Schenectady. Skin, neck, titty. Skin, neck, titty. 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 All right. Yeah, there you go. You guys can edit that part. <laughs> no, we won't. <laughs> yeah, we'll leave it. Awesome. So, yeah, I grew up in upstate New York, and I mean, I always wanted to be a hairdresser. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. I feel like it must have been maybe in my blood or something like that. And then I got to go to beauty school when I was in high school. So my junior and senior year, when I was 15 through 17, I went to beauty school. I'd go to Albany Votech and Mm -hmm. take the bus from high school and yeah, got to go to beauty school. I graduated high school and got my license at 17. So, so do you have any family that's in the industry or you, it was just something that was pulling at you? No, I did. I had, um, my cousin's mom was in the industry. She was a hairdresser. She definitely was a, a great visual of someone super cool her name was joanne she had cool like eggplant colored hair always right. really spiky she used paul mitchell products the smell of fast drying sculpting spray always reminds me of her <laughs> she had cool long fingernails always dressed great so her like lifestyle that she had kind of from being a hairdresser right. was kind of spiked my curiosity or i saw it as a living too you know what i mean i liked like what she got to do she seemed like she loved it and i also have another cousin named lisa who's in the hair industry for over 20 years and again just kind of doing what they want to do, have their hair the way they want to have it. Right. Seemed wow. like the coolest thing ever. And then later on, after I went to beauty school, I found out that my mom had wanted to be a hairdresser, but her dad, my grandfather wouldn't let her. Oh, wow. So. So kind of like, you're kind of living on that legacy through. Yeah. She was a bit ecstatic that, then, right? But that story, yeah. your, your grandfather wouldn't let your mom be a yeah. hairdresser. You know, how many parents, and it, 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 it's really remarkable how many people, you know, who, 
who look down on our industry. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, oh, you don't, you know, I'm not going to let you be a hairdresser. You're going to go to school. You're going to go to college. But this industry has saved so many people. You yeah. know what I mean? It, it's such a wonderful industry. Yeah, so, it's a shame. My mom would have been a great hairdresser because she's a social butterfly, knows everybody. <laughs> She'd have the biggest clientele ever. Right. That was a miss. <laughs> Nobody else in town would have clients. Just no, <laughs> yeah, my mom would have been amazing at it. So what did she end up doing? She did a variety of things. She went. She worked for an insurance company out of high school. And then she worked various jobs. Her last job before she retired, she worked for Xerox Corporation. Okay. Hmm. That's cool. So, yep. um, so like she would have... Been much happier in, in hairdressing. Mm-hmm. I know, yeah. right? Seems like much more rewarding for. Her. What? Uh, so, what happened after that? Did you? Uh, did you oh, go so, to like an apprentice, or did you work at a salon? So I graduated. I got my license, and I had no idea you could work at like for a manufacturer. Or go to a hair show. I didn't know what a hair show was. Right. I was very green. I had no idea. So I went to work at a hair salon in in a mall that was like forty five minutes away from my house. And this gentleman that worked there, I was kind of trying to find a place to assist or someone to teach me how to do hair. The first place I worked at was more of a local place and the guy I worked for was amazing. Mm-hmm. He, I didn't really, I assisted him, but I actually really just um, like, he had a paper book and I would make appointments for him, kind of watch him do hair. And what I learned most from him was that your personality is everything and how you treat people is everything because his clients just loved him. Right. Love, love, loved. He was booked from like seven in the morning till 10 at night. And wow. just nonstop. And it was a really cool experience. This was like in 1994. Mm-hmm. And so that was kind of like my first introduction to the hair salon. And then I was like, well, I need to start trying to take my own clients or try to practice doing hair. Someone <laughs> needs to teach me something. And so I went to work at a salon in the mall where they had walk-ins. Right. And I was not there very long, like maybe a month or something. And my very first haircut I did there, I fake cut the hair. <laughs> yeah, I had a guy. I literally cut no hair off his head. It was one of those places like you could you could wet the hair down with a, like a spray bottle. Right. Oh, right, right, right. And I sure did. And I did all the stuff. Like I held his hair out and all like, I mean, I didn't know how to do a haircut really, you know, and I didn't know really where to start. And so I just fake cut it and I talked with him and I just pretended. And there was probably hair on the floor from the last person who cut hair there. And I just, that was it. Put some product in his hair and on you go. And he paid like 10 bucks for his haircut and left. We're good to 10 bucks for his non-haircut. His non-haircut. I'm sure his wife was so pissed when she when he got home and she was like, your hair looks exactly the same. But I was... But I had a great conversation. Yeah, I was scared to death. You, and so, you're a hustler. She's, she's, she's a, hustler. a hustler. Yeah. Pure fake haircut, not right. a single strand. And he had a lot of hair. He really needed a haircut. But I was like, oh, I don't know what to do. So this other gentleman who worked there, his name was Peter. And at one point he was like, Okay, you don't belong here. You need to go down the street to this salon. There's this guy named Julio. He owns a salon. He works with assistants. He'll let you assist under him. He'll show you what to do. Like, you need to be in that environment. Right. He's like, you need to quit right now and go. <laughs> so I did. Just, okay, let me go. And I did and not think, just thinking, I, of course I'm going to get a job. Of course he's going to sure, hire right, me. exactly. Luckily, he was a fellow Italian-American and he hired me. So Julio's salon was a Paul Mitchell salon, uh-huh. and he was an educator for Paul Mitchell, motivational speaker of sorts. And he had a team. There was probably like five or six hairdressers, four or five assistants that worked there. So I went, I met him and his manager, and his manager, Nikki, was amazing. And I was like, you have to hire me. Like, I need to learn how to do hair. I'll do anything. Like, I'll sweep, clean, everything, you know. So long story short, they did hire me. And through at Julio's salon was really where, like, I fell in love with the beauty industry and found out about stuff. Right. Uh, the biggest thing I found out about was Robert Cromines and Paul Mitchell, of course. So he sent us, like myself and the other assistants, we went to a new talent training, basically, for Paul Mitchell. So they were hosting something, trying to get some more educators in. Was, and, it, was it in upstate New York? Or yep, in Albany. Travel? Nope, okay. it was in Albany. And you're, and, you're 18 years old? 18, yeah. Yes, good calculation. Just, <laughs> just, just four, four short years ago, I, um, <laughs> I went. Yeah, so we went to this training, and the educator who was training us, of course, talked about like the story of Paul Mitchell, which now I feel like we get to broadcast it a lot more because of social media and things like that. Right. But said, and we only had hair products, so it was only the wet line. There wasn't any um, color or anything like that. So she went through like the story of Paul Mitchell and John Paul DeJoria and the story of their sort of company and how the company came to be. And then she started giving us like a product knowledge class and we learned how to round brush. And I'm like, oh my God, like this lady is teaching me how to do hair. This is awesome. (laughs) So I did that, fell in love with, I'm like, yep, I want to be an educator for Paul Mitchell, whatever I have to do. So that was kind of one thing. But in Julio's salon, he sort of did a lot of the stuff that 
Robert did in his salon in California because Robert's always kind of been that hairdresser that shared his knowledge and would go on stage and not just talk about his haircut. He would talk about what he's doing in the salon and how he hires and things like that. So we would replicate that in the salon that I worked at in upstate New York. And Julia was great because he was always about education and goals and where do you want to be? What do you want to do? And he also took me to my first hair show, which is where I got to meet Robert Mm -hmm. and Stephanie Kachelski. And Robert would travel with his, his salon team. So he would go and do hair shows for Paul Mitchell and he would bring the salon team with him, right. whoever like his assistants were or whatever, and they would come in and that's who would do the show. And so that was it. I was like, oh my God, I'm joining the circus. I love all these people. I need to work for them. And through seeing Robert and his team at hair shows, I found out that he only hires from right out of beauty school or from out of state. He doesn't hire from any local salons in the town oh. that he lives in. To avoid grief. Yeah, and just why take the stylist and the clients from another salon owner. Right. And, and also I think my favorite saying that he has is it's, he prefers to pick the apple from the tree, not the barrel. And so we can kind of train everybody from the ground up and have them sort of fit into the culture that we like and do the things that we do rather right. than trying to like break somebody of, of what they were doing before. Right. Did, have you ever been back to that, that first salon and thank that guy? Oh yeah. I'm still friends with Julio. Him and his fiance were at our wedding. Oh, nice. Um, my, Original manager, Nikki, like we text, still friends with her. They no, own the, the first guy at the salon that you were in that he told you, you need, <laughs> you oh, need yeah. to go. You need to go down. To, <laughs> you need to go find yes. Julia. <laughs> I have not gone back down back to that actual salon, but I have um, DM'd with this guy, Peter, on Facebook. We sent him a message and I was like, hey, P.S., I don't know if you remember this, but when you told me to quit and leave, that was the best, best thing you could have ever done for me. So, right. And then he actually ended up coming to work at that salon, too. No way, really? Yeah. Awesome. It's funny because, you know, how little things in life totally alters the rest of your life, right? So oh, if he yeah. would have never done that, you would have ne- probably never found Julia. I know. Some. I feel like somehow this was my destiny. It would have all worked out somehow. Maybe not quite as quickly, but yeah. Right. But Julio's passion for Paul Mitchell was great. It was very infectious. And that kind of, like his passion for it was easy to fall in love with. Paul Mitchell over sure. all of that and then meeting all the other educators and people you guys know what Paul Mitchell people are like like you can't help but love them and kind of want to be a part of it so yeah, they they are really infectious about education I mean they you know everybody that we've met through the Paul Mitchell program and educators they're all they get all it, it just as excited as Mary does as far as when it comes to education. Yeah. And think about like, I mean, Mary's been with Paul Mitchell. I mean, it sounds like you've been with him for like 14, or no, 24, 24, years, 24, years, yeah, 24 yeah. years. 24 years. Yeah, 24 years. My math isn't as good as his. <laughs> <laughs> Not um, judging. No, <laughs> yes, you are. Um, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> but like, and after 24 years, she's still as ex- as excited as you would you would expect like from a, from a first year hairdresser. That's amazing. Oh, yeah. That's incredible. It's awesome. You know? I love it. Yeah, that's cool. So, um, so you're working for how long were you with? Was it, is it Julio? Yeah. So I only worked in his salon for two years, and so he would have us make goal lists. And my goal was, I want to go work for Robert Cromines. Like, I need to go to California and work at that salon. Well, you knew like er, that was it. Yeah, I saw him on stage with his original stage partner, Gene Bra. They did a sh- mm-hmm. they did shows. Like, I went to Hair World in DC, saw him on stage, and he was with other people in Paul Mitchell's core group. Um. And actually, Robert was kind of one of the youngest ones on the team as far as like he, I don't even know how to put it. He was the baby in the in the group in a sense. You know what I mean? He was right. not necessarily the one who was the leader. Mm-hmm. But of course, he's like a showstopper. And right. so I was like, oh my God, like he's just amazing. You just want to be around him. You want to know what he's doing. You want to know more about him. You want to hang out with him. And that's it. Like it's like watching a rock star on stage. You know, you're just like, oh my God, I need to know more about you right yeah. now. Let's Let me figure this out. So... I was like, yes. And plus he would always like be so gracious and introduce his salon team. And so you're meeting people that he actually works with. So it was not just like a um, persona for stage. You know, I got to go backstage and see him working with his team also and his team loving what they're doing. And I'm like, I want to go work with those people. Th- those are my people. Those are my people. And it was great because it wasn't that I didn't want to work at Julio salon. I just didn't want to stay in Schenectady forever. Right. I wanted to go out and do more stuff and and, you, and and did you know that that you were going to have to relocate to do all that? In my in high school in my yearbook, I put that I was going to move to California and be a super successful hairdresser, traveling the world. And I don't no know, way. like Are you, you just serious? manifest this stuff. Yes, and I was going to, yeah. You got to take a picture of that and post it. Maybe. 
I don't know. <laughs> when the podcast comes out, you have to post. I don't know. That. Picture's kind of bad. I got big mole. No, 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 it doesn't have to be you. <laughs> just the words. Just, just the words. It's fine. Just okay, the maybe, maybe, maybe the see. picture. Maybe we convince Robert to ha- have her put the picture up. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I'm a little. I'm vain. I don't know if I can do it. Maybe uh, the, the words. words. Maybe the, the words. words. The words right. we call. I mean, the that's word. cool, man. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. from high school to now. I mean, look, yes, you manifested it, right? Yep, I sure did. Thank God. I mean, thank God I didn't write something stupid. <laughs> I definitely like, wrote something stupid. Uh, like be a starving artist living in a tent or something. Like that would be <laughs> awful to manifest that. That would be terrible to manifest that. So, that, that takes guts for a 20-year-old girl from yep. Saskatchewan. Up, upstate yeah. New York. From upstate New York. <laughs> Saskatchewan. To move, yeah, to move out to California, the West Coast. Yeah, but I feel like when you're like 18 to like, 24 I think like ignorance is bliss and yeah. I was like I'm going and I didn't have the job of course not like I could send him a DM and be like hey I'm gonna come work for you <laughs> I just sort of yeah I did actually when I was 19 though there was some ad there was like an ad in the back of Vogue magazine or something Vogue or Glamour maybe mm-hmm. There was something in the back of the magazine for all the millennials. That's like the paper <laughs> paper book that one would read and flip through. It smells good when you open it. Yes. I did not have a cell phone yet, I don't think. And at the back of the magazine, it was like a beauty beauty issue, basically. Mm-hmm. And in the back of the ma- magazine, I was looking through and I was like, oh, my God, that's that Robert Cromian's guy logo. And so there was some promo to go to a salon and get his haircut. I can't really remember exactly what the promo was, but I was like, I'm going to get my haircut. I'm going to see if this salon is real. I'm going. So I called and made an appointment. I'm sure he was scared to death and thought I was stalking him, which mm-hmm. I was because I wanted to work for him. Right. And I wanted, that was it. I was like, I'm going to be there. So one of my best friends and I flew to California, made the appointment. Like, and of course, I had to wait like four months for an appointment. Sure. I was like, really? Like, not sooner than that? But <laughs> anyway. So I made the appointment. My best friend and I flew out and rented a car and drove to San Diego and got my hair cut. You, you know that's crazy, right? Yeah, but I, well, the thing of it was, I was going to move there to go work, but what if he didn't really have a salon? What if it was all, <laughs> a facade? you know, you watch like Dateline and these things that like, maybe it was fake. Maybe right. he didn't really have a salon. That's why Robert's here now sitting in the background, right? Because he didn't know whether this this podcast was real or not. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I'm not allowed to go to an apartment with three men and one token lady, Katie May. She's the one who would drug me. Like it would be her, unsuspecting. Right. Listen. I am sure. not stupid. You spend too many Friday nights on TV. <laughs> no, I do not. But, you know, you got to take care yeah. of things. Yeah, you got to take care of stuff. I waited a long time for my husband. I'm not going to uh, let him go. So he's yeah. going to stay here right with me. That's, That's awesome. Right. What if you were to lose me? Yeah, no doubt. Mm-mm. Yeah. What if you were to lose him? So, so you traveled 3,000 miles for a haircut. Yep, got a haircut. The salon was even more amazing than I thought. The people mm-hmm. were more amazing than I thought. And the whole experience was... That's part of all that. The experience was really cool in the in the salon and stuff. Yes, it was yeah. amazing, and everybody like they were just the coolest people I had ever seen, and especially because I had I think I well I had never been to California before then, so everyone had their own style. One kid had a perm afro. People were wearing like big platform shoes. What year was this? Ninety six ish. Ninety five, ninety six, right. something like that. Must no ninety five, ninety five. So I moved in ninety six. Right. So then when I was 20, I moved out. I needed to like, you know, save my money. And then actually Robert and his stage partner, Gene Bra were coming to Albany to do a hair show at the egg, which is like our big convention center in Albany is shaped mm-hmm. like an, shaped like, like an, an egg. egg. It is shaped like an egg. And so I was like, well, I'm not going to move out before then. Cause then I'm not gonna be able to do the show with them. <laughs> so I waited till the show and then I moved the next day. So did you, like when you were, so you were working with Robert at the, at the sh- or with Paul Mitchell at the, at the show? Well, kind of like just- how we do it now. Not really working with Robert, but working with his team. Right. And he would like, like him and Gene oversaw everything. So they would tell us kind of what we want, what they wanted to do with the models. And he had his team that worked really closely with him. And so I was technically a local educator. Got it. So basically I got, I do think I got to do a highlight and I think it probably took me like three hours because I was so nervous. I don't even know if it was right or not or someone had to redo it. But like I was shampooing, shampooing the models, making sure they got dressed, wardrobe, just all the stuff you do when you're like your very first time at a show. Sure. So 17, you get your license. 18, you join a Paul Mitchell uh, salon. salon. And 19, you're an educator. 18, I was an educator. 18. Oh, snap. Uh, 19, I had a, a year of working in the salon. So I worked at the salon in upstate New York from 18 to 20. 
Oh God, that's that's no joke. It's yeah. definitely in your in, in your DNA. Yeah, I mean, as it far was, it, it's this cool. industry is so amazing. I was like, oh my God, I need to go to all the hair shows. I need to do all the things. So that's pretty cool. So you never pulled, you never got the chance to pull Robert aside and say like, hey, I'm moving to your town next week. Oh yeah, that I did, of course. Yeah. Like he knew that I was moving. But like people say that all the time, and I'm sure I don't know how many times he could count on both his hands. I'm sure even now people will be oh I'm moving to work for you, and we're like okay, come and work and. Of course, not everybody does. Probably you know, most people don't. Right? Yeah, but some do. A lot of mm-hmm. our team is from out of state. A that's, lot of it is. So cool. yeah, and so I came out, and then I interviewed with his managers. Um, yeah, and they hired me thankfully because, yeah, they did. <laughs> there, was, <laughs> there wasn't as intensive as a hiring process, <laughs> but I didn't even think that I wasn't going to get the job again. Just, like just ignorance is bliss. Like, no, I'm going to work at that salon. That's the salon I want to work at. Like, why wouldn't they hire me? Just ignorance is bliss. That's pretty. That, like zero fear. Like you just. But you already had an in. You're already part of the Paul Mitchell. I do you know? think that helped because I was already a Paul Mitchell educator. I do think that that helped a lot because as soon as I started, I got to like start helping with their education and teach like product knowledge classes at the right. salon for the team. So I do think that was an in. Good job. F- finding her angle, man. That's all she right. did. Just found her angle. Yeah. Got to make your own stuff happen. I have mad respect. I mean, Thanks. That, that's guts. No doubt. That's, that's guts. <laughs> so when did, so what happened after that? I mean, did you, <laughs> did you, were you on the team and like, did you start traveling and like uh, all, all the, all the rock star stuff that you were seeking? Yeah. And more. I mean, probably. So we had like local shows, like the Long Beach Ice Show was happening mm-hmm. in California there were things like any photo shoots or anything. Robert was doing tons of photo shoots and video shoots for Paul Mitchell. So pretty much any time there was a shoot, like the team was always invited to volunteer to do anything and help and do whatever. So of course I volunteered always. Sure. And pretty much everyone in the salon would be like, okay, I can do it. Unless you truly had another obligation, you wanted to be in it because everybody kind of came from other states. And so everyone would come together because that sort of became your new family. And I get it. Yeah. Yeah. So everyone would come together. You're like, oh, okay, hang out by myself. And I don't know anybody <laughs> or go volunteer and do hair and hang out with cool people who I look up to that are my mentors. So, yeah. So how long did it take you to see yourself kind of like at the bottom of the pack, slowly climbing, slowly, you know what I mean? Still climbing, still climbing. Well, you, yeah. Um, to where you feel like you had the, con- well, I guess, you, I mean. I feel like I came into Robert's salon, like for me, it was really incredibly perfect timing, but again, not specifically knowing because at that time we do this big hair show with Paul Mitchell called Paul Mitchell gathering. And it's every other year, typically in Las Vegas mostly. But the year that I started was I got there in June and in July was the show in Las Vegas. And that was his first time to showcase his, a Robert Chromian salon team. Right, 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 at right. the hair show and so that was like a really I didn't realize it was a really I just thought that's the way it went but <laughs> I it was a really big deal because it was his first time showcasing his whole salon team and rather than being just like under the umbrella totally of Paul Mitchell and being the whole Paul Mitchell team he was under a Robert Chromian salon with his team so I got to go to that gathering like a month into working for his salon but again it was I volunteered to do it I was it wasn't like I was up on stage doing hair. I mean, I was assisting, I'm sweeping, I'm shampooing hair, I'm passing well, foils, anything and whatever everything. Whatever needs to be done. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had Stephanie was there and it was so cool. It was one of the coolest hair shows. I was like, oh my God, this show is so cool. This it was the, the cowboy show. And there, the, yeah, there was a lot. What, it was so, fun. What, tell me about the cowboy show. It was actually kind of like a part of it was a men's show. Uh-huh. And so the guys wore these one legged pants, which were basically skirts, but they were really cool, almost like skateboarder type skirts. So they were kind of shiny. I feel like they either had tank tops on or they were shirtless and had to have abs. I don't remember. <laughs> I feel like I probably was one of the people that had to oil them up, which well, is not in my job description ever again. <laughs> but there, put that oil on those. Mom- okay. All right. Whatever you guys want us to do, we're doing it, doing it. But the guys had their, um, they wore cowboy hats on their heads and then underneath like this was a time when Robert and some of the team were doing like ponytail haircuts like to make really textured textured cool haircuts so all the hair was strategically put in ponytails on top of the head so then they took off the hats the guys held the hats and like we put like product and stuff in it whatever else we needed instead of having a tray right and then the team cut hair so it was like Robert Stephanie there was probably five other people cutting hair I can't remember everyone's name right at this moment feel 
under pressure. Mm -hmm. And then like the assistants would like help and assist and they do like these ponytail haircuts and really cool men's haircuts. And then they would style them using, using the Paul Mitchell products. And then the guys actually had a dance together for the finale. So yeah, they were (laughs) mostly heterosexual. Yep. Stand by your man by Tammy Wynette. And they were pretty much heterosexual guys, like big buff guys. And then they, their finale part was they had to like get together and like kind of dance off the stage. Yeah. (laughs) So and the crowd went crazy. Like people were going nuts. And obviously, cause we usually use predominantly female models and they're yeah. all gorgeous. And even though you love to look at them, you're like, why is she so skinny? <laughs> why is she so gorgeous? So like to see like 10 or 12 guys on stage, like, and the audience is mostly women. They were just thrilled. So that was exciting. So that was like, way to play to the crowd, right? Exactly. Robert is consummate showman. So he knows, he knows what he's doing. So yeah, that was, um, yeah, that was like my intro two months in. I was like, whoa, no, this, this is so what yep so every day every day this is everything i thought of uh-huh yeah, that's cool it's amazing to me like as big as like robert star has been over the years that 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 the whole team he brought the whole team and and, and he he put some of that light on the team too i think that's pretty oh, cool always yeah always i mean and i guess what i really meant to say was like i respect robert for doing that you know that, that's very cool oh yeah it i feel like it would probably be I hope this isn't horrible to say it would probably be easier for him to do the whole show and right. do everything. And because he's great and he's amazing and like his best place is on stage. You know what I mean? Like sure. that he comes to life and he's no, literally nobody has more fun than him on stage. I think as artists can be sometimes like insecure or nervous. You just want to do so good that they're so serious about it and so mm-hmm. afraid to mess up that they forget to have fun while they're doing it. Yeah, and totally he's just so comfortable on stage that like, even if something, I mean, he's cut himself on stage before and he's still just like going to keep on going. I'm like, you're bleeding. I'm going to pass out. But it would probably, I mean, I'm sure it would be easy to just, okay, here I am a one man show. I can do it all. But I think that he thrives on like seeing other people be a part of it with him and take him, take everybody on the journey with him. Cause I think it's, you know, it's, it's more fun when you have the group with you and you have right. every, you get to take everybody up with you and take everybody on the ride with you. And you have those moments on stage. Cause for me, I usually, um, I do talk on stage and stuff like that mm-hmm. and do color, but oftentimes our segments may be separate where I'm assisting him a lot. And I like when I get to assist, because if I'm not wearing a microphone, I can really hear what everybody's saying and stuff. So like, I'm looking forward to tomorrow when him and Angus are on stage together and like, they have fun together and laugh and there's jokes and banter. And then I know Robert and John Mosley get along so well and they have a good time together. So there's different threads that happen. And then Robert and Colin and, and then Noogie with his style, like there's just a lot of cool dynamic that happens on stage where it's not so like, it's not rehearsed and it doesn't, it's really natural and it's fun. And it shows the team having a good time too, which I think makes it fun for the audience. I I was just going to say that that's fun for the audience. Because it doesn't feel rehearsed, then it just it's, it just makes it more natural. Yeah, we rehearse the stuff that is super important to some degree. Like Robert has done the show probably as soon as he sees the diagram, he sees the show in his head, and he's already done it five thousand times to the point of probably like no failure, no matter what goes wrong. It's okay. He's got it. He's got it. No matter what happens, like we're not going to let the <laughs> let the show go down. Not at his watch. So. So if you're on stage with him and you goof up, he he'll, he'll, he kind of knows to pick up or something. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. like I said, like I mean, even for his own self, like he, we were just at a show in um, Australia and he cut his thumb, and you know, fingers just and like all the adrenaline and fingers bleed so much and there was blood. Oh my god, it was everywhere. <laughs> this poor model's tutu was like covered in blood. He was wiping them on my black jeans, and I was didn't have a band aid, didn't have a towel, sure. and but yeah, just held his thumb real real tight and just thankfully it was his left thumb and he could just keep cutting hair with his right hand i was like oh my god okay oh. just keep going oh my god i hope the client i mean i hope the model wasn't blonde because she would've... was not blonde she had actually she had kind of pink hair and it was a dry hair oh, it would have been pink <laughs> it was already pink so that was cool but yeah you just keep going but i think he has fun in some, I don't want to say failure, but there is some fun in failure, things that happen. Mm -hmm. If someone's nervous on stage or somebody, you know, like those fun things that happen or it doesn't always quite work out is kind of fun. So, And you don't want it to totally not work out. You want there to be (laughs) success, but some of the fun stuff, you know. Yeah, so how did did it feel when you went from volunteering to to assist everything when when they came to and said, hey, would you like to be a part of this? 
yeah, I mean, it was well, the first time they're like, we're going to pay you. I was like, for real? <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, I want to get paid too. That's awesome. It was a bonus, but yeah. I don't know. I feel like when you're in it and you love it and you feel great about it, it's just still so fun to do it that it doesn't even matter, I guess. Yeah. But it is cool. Like every time like you, when I first got told I was going to get paid to do a hair show from the ARCS team, I was like, oh my God, that's awesome. I didn't even ask how much. I was just like, sweet, thanks. <laughs> so that was cool. And I More got... More than volunteering, right? Yeah, it was awesome. And then the same with Paul Mitchell, because you would get a fee for doing your classes. And I was like, you, okay, great. Thank you. And then you can, you know, get raises and all of that stuff. So because instead of handing a foil, now you're putting the foil in. You know what I mean? You, you I still pass foils, Tony. I do. <laughs> I still do. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> Yeah, I passed foil to this guy. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's great. I love it. I mean, I can't believe I get paid to paid to do what I love. It's it's awesome. I love it. But I love being at hair shows. Like it's a very happy place for me. I like being in the back room. Mm -hmm. I like being with thirty models and our local educator team and having future professionals there because they're so hungry for anything you have yeah. to say or do. You take you know you do a blow dry and they think it's the most magical thing ever. But it's great because it's a nice reminder that you can't really take for granted all the things that you know or have learned, or you might think something is not that exciting for someone and it could be the tiniest thing and they think it's great and they've learned something from it. That's so I think that's the part that's fulfilling that makes it still so exciting. That's amazing. And this weekend, um, you're working with a lot of the future professionals as well. Yeah, we have, we have about six future professionals with us and we have um, our local education team. We even have one girl that volunteered from studio B in Colorado. They're um, amazing salon corporation and she, made her way out here just to volunteer and help out and be part of it there's a future professional that's uh, from uh, frederick that's nominated for one shot award this weekend yeah oh emily, really yeah, yeah. Emily palmer yeah, yeah. oh emily palmer, awesome on. is it is it the st it's a student cat category yeah right? yeah that's pretty cool yeah we voted robert and i um when btc sent all the stuff out and all the stuff was beautiful but mm -hmm. the student stuff is so impressive i'm like i surely was not able to do that no I'm probably way. still not some of the stuff was just beautiful mm -hmm. it didn't look like the work of somebody still in beauty school it's, am it, it's amazing and like if, even if we can live there for a little bit it's amazing like I think like like social media and Instagram has kind of matured those guys because now like they're playing to a different level right oh like, my God. like before you're only playing to the best hairdresser in your salon right and now you're playing to like every hairdresser in the country oh yeah the you world know? you exactly. can see anything at any moment whenever you want so it's almost like shame on you if you don't find out what you're looking for. Right. You know, yeah. you can get it anywhere. Exactly. And it's even, at our fingertips. You can And even with like online education and stuff, everything is kind of kind of there. I mean, you still need to do I'm still a strong proponent to doing it live, but you know, but but just for general technique and stuff. Oh my gosh, no. Hands in, you there's there is really nothing better than a hands in experience because once you get your hands doing it then you're going to remember it. You're going to be able to duplicate it. You'll be more apt to try it on a guest. But all the stuff that you can see online, it's like it's priceless because at the very least, even if you don't try it on a guest, you can grab your mannequin head and practice it. That's it. And you can do it on your own time. You could do it at 12 o'clock at night. You could do it at 6 in the morning. You have a cancellation at the salon. You could get some inspiration. You could. It's available 24-7. You don't have to leave your town. It doesn't matter if you have children you have to take care of. Before it used to be kind of, I feel like for a lot of hairdressers, you know, if we're not in the salon, especially with all of the independent contractors, if you're not in the salon doing hair, you're not making any money. Sure. No one pays you just because you're, you know, they don't just pay you for the heck of it. So it's always been such, it's hard to leave your salon or leave your, your chair that's booked that's bringing you income to go and take days off to go get education. Sure. It's difficult. Sure. So to have that access that you can do it on your downtime, you can do it from home, you don't have to get a babysitter, all that other stuff that goes into it, you just can pick and choose and see like the best of the best and anything and everything you want. Pretty incredible. We, we, this is definitely, I say, the utopia of hairdressing, you know, like for the hairdresser yeah. itself, not necessarily hairdressing, you know. I kind of still have to give that to like the the days of uh you know Vidal and 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 uh and Trevor Sorby and all those yeah. you know those guys that we that we kind of grew up watching actually dressing hair. But as far as for the hairdresser, the hairstylist, I think it's a utopia. This is the utopia time. This is the golden time for the hairstylist. Yeah, know? it's pretty amazing how social media has brought hairdressers together and kind of raised mm -hmm. the level of how people perceive hairdressers. 
Agreed. I definitely. How we perceive each other, honestly. Oh, yeah. You know? Well, there wasn't much sharing hairdresser to hairdresser of what you were doing. It used Mm -hmm. to be like you would just keep all your, maybe you'd share in your salon with your Mm -hmm. people, but not really sharing hairdresser to hairdresser. Hey, I learned this new cool technique or let me show it to you or let me share this with you. And now everyone shares everything. They put all their, all their tips and tricks out there and it's Uh, great. It's incredible. It makes everybody rise up rather than like, I don't know what anyone was afraid of before, but does it matter? I think, I think, I don't know if necessarily, I think there was some, you know, what am I afraid of? But, but it's also like, like, where's the voice? Like, mm-hmm. how do you get the voice out there? You know, it was only a very few, you know, even like when all of us were coming up in the industry in the early 90s, there was only very few people that were representing the industry. You know, you had Robert, mm-hmm. you had Sonia Dove, you had all these like brand, you know, these people that are working for these brands and they were the only ones that were representing. But you would only see them like once a year or whatever the show that you go yeah, exactly. to. You had to go to the show to see them. Right. And, and now you can see uh, Ms. Mary Cromines every day if you want, you know, or Robert Cromines every day or yeah, Sonia Dove every day. Yeah, everybody. I, you know, the social media, too, what it did is it, it killed my, my my ego, right? I'm like, oh, my gosh, there's some really great hairdressers in this country. Oh, it's, it's eye-opening. It's not just the ones that are on the stage. It's like, whoa, this is crazy. And then oh. every day there's another one, yeah. you know? And and I, and as far as like I, th- I think kind of this is where we started, but like the evolution path of a, of a hairstylist is incredible right now. Yeah, you know, just how quickly it happens, it's amazing. Oh yeah, it's yeah. like fast track. Totally fast track, right? Mm-hmm. We're in the fast track part of our industry, our yeah. time in our industry. Because Corey and I, we cheated our way through hair school. T- completely. <laughs> completely. Bad bad yeah. boys. Yeah, and, and and trust me now, you know, thirty years later, we're like. Man, we probably shouldn't shoot up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you guys have to be ashamed of yourselves. I need to do one. I should have done one more perm wrap. Right. I think I only did one, but you know, I should have done that second one. <laughs> I can. I'm not good at a perm. I did have six weeks of perming during the summer. Really? Yeah, six weeks. <laughs> um, yeah. Awful. I won't tell you how we we got through it. I can imagine. Yeah, you know, whatever. It was what it was. It was what it was. No, that's crazy. Are there are there like um, like I feel like because I don't I don't dress hair and I don't I don't do all that. I kind of like skip that, and I kind of feel like there's a big part of my career that's 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 empty almost. Mm-hmm. Is there anything that that you kind of wish you'd spent more time on, or is a challenge for you to spend more time on to be better at? Oh my gosh, yes. So I always yes, I wish there was more time in my day to do more <laughs> hands in stuff and like create and have like what if or I want to do this and I do get to do that but not as concentrated as I would like to like you know just spend a day like in a studio with Robert and just kind of messing around to see like what happens and what ifs but just recently I got to take a two-day class Paul Mitchell did our we did an educator training which actually was the I was one of the educators that was being trained so that was priceless because I got to I wasn't being a teacher in there and I mm-hmm. wasn't part of setup or anything like that. So it was really nice to soak it all in and take on that education. But we had an additional two days optional where we could do a um, hands in cutting class with this um, gentleman named Cristiano, who is a Vidal Sassoon trainer, actually was one of Angus's Angus Mitchell's teachers at Vidal Sassoon when he went to beauty school. Oh wow! And. I am for sure not a precision hair cutter. I love to cut hair. I le- I love it a lot. I just don't, I would never teach it necessarily. Like I'm much more visual. I'm salon reality. I like to do condensed cutting. So I learned about myself because my whole <laughs> body hurt from having great body position and my elbows up and all my things that I cut everything at a zero elevation, which isn't bad, but I learned a lot in that class and I loved it because I was like, oh my God, I felt like I grew so much and learned so much. And even when I got back into the salon in my daily life as a hairdresser behind the chair, I was able to use a lot of the tips and tricks and techniques that he showed me that I don't normally put into my daily life as a hairdresser. So that was the best. Like I would, I need to do more of that. That's awesome. How, how How many days a week are you behind the chair? Four days a week. I usually work Wednesday through Saturday. Oh, you sound like us. Yeah, that's, that's our schedule. <laughs> Is it? Yeah. yeah nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been I've been uh, we've been that way since two thousand or something, right? Yeah. Yeah, four days a week, two thousand. Yep. Yeah. I I am big proponent of it. Like if I own my own salon, I think I make it mandatory, four days a week. Yeah, I like um, I like having both. I need both sides of it to fulfill myself. I like mm-hmm. being behind the chair and the not instant gratification, but I like making somebody feel great about themselves. And, you know, it's not always unicorn colors and, you know, hair, 12 inches of hair coming off. It's a lot of great coverage for me, a lot of highlighting in San Diego, lots of blondes, uh, a little bit of unicorn color here, there, 
But um, I just, I like making somebody like, oh my God, I feel like crap. My hair doesn't look good. And then they leave the chair and they're like, I feel so amazing. I need a mm-hmm. selfie. Are you going to take me to the Instagram world? <laughs> and I love that. I love that so much. I, I need that like real time gratification of making somebody love their hair and feel like they look gorgeous so as much have, as I need the show stuff too. So there's an actual Instagram wall. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. We have one of the white walls in our salon. We have our, we have a double sided backdrop. The wall itself is white, but we have a black and white backdrop that we can flip over depending on the color of the guest hair, mm-hmm. what time of day it is. We have two ring lights. We have some products set up over there and it's a little bit out of the way. There's no stations or anything over there. Oh, but cool. yeah, and it's funny because guests get out of the chair and they just automatically, even if you're like, sometimes you've done their hair exactly the same as last time or maybe no time for a picture at that moment, but they are literally like, take it off. <laughs> you're going to take my picture, right? Yes, yes, I absolutely am right now. Yep. And then like even even the other guests that aren't your clients are like, hey, you're talking to their style. It's like, hey, hey, when do I get my picture taken? Yeah, they want, they like it. It makes everyone feel good. Like you would be surprised how much attention people in their real lives don't get. So I think that when they come into the hair salon, it really is a a big difference that we make in their lives. And those things like, it's just, it's cool. They're like, oh my God, you're taking my picture. Okay. You're going to post my picture. Yes. Oh, I'm going to start following you. I'm going to tell my girlfriends and they just feel excited about it. That's pretty crazy. It's awesome. It's like, I think what you said is, is so true. I think, I think our job is to, I think people, whenever we have our clients, they're either looking to feel beautiful or feel important. You mm-hmm. know? And I think at, at the basis of what we do, that's what we do, you know, and that, and that's what their it's expectation true. is, is to feel beautiful, to feel important, and no matter what they do or who they are, you know, they, they, every human wants to feel one of those two things. And, and we have this incredible job and opportunity that we can do that. I know. It's yeah. amazing. It's pretty, pretty, pretty cool. I like it. So what's, uh, Miss Mary up to now? What, what is, what are you working on? What's the future? What is the future? Well, I'm working on the salon a lot with Robert right now. Uh, Robert works in the salon one time a month and our team is pretty amazing. I feel like we're trying to be in the salon more to be Mm -hmm. more supportive of our team, take the salon to the next level. Uh, I feel like successful hairdressers is great because then they're happy and you know, it makes the salon happy and all of that stuff. So we have two salons in San Diego So that part for me is I want to be a better partner for him in the salon business so that we can really like propel the salon to where it deserves to be Mm -hmm. for him and for the team that works there. So we're working on a lot of stuff with that. We're working on a call center. That's one thing, just the importance of making reservations and kind of taking our front desk out. And Robert's been talking about this call center for a lot of years. And so we're finally about to make it happen. We're working on it. So you won't have speak. a front desk. It'll be, it'll be very mobile. So working with, um, we're going to, we're upgrading to Mevo too. So we can have iPads and stuff in the salon, making sure that all the salon stylists know how to check out their own guests. If they need to, we'll have hosts and hostesses, but not somebody just standing behind a front desk. Got it. So something that's a lot more mobile so that we could upgrade the experience for the guests like Robert always like if he comes in the salon and there's a line of people waiting to check out he's like I don't understand they've been in the chair for three hours why are they waiting in line to check out we could have done this sooner Mm -hmm. so just trying to make the experience even better for the guests and easier and not necessarily quicker but really if you are sitting there for that long we could expedite some of the other things that you have to wait on even the new valet valet company we have in our downtown San Diego location um, now you can text the guests can text the valet when they're ready for their car to come out rather than us taking their ticket out there while they're checking out. Got so it. just little things to kind of upgrade the experience even more. Like we have an amazing like wash Ubering house. inside of the salon. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty visionary actually. He, yeah. That's see why I moved to work for him right. and, then, and then married him. <laughs> we need to get into that story. Like how, how did, how did I, you know, you, you went there to work for him. Now you're climbing up and you're, you're, you're doing, you know, show well, <laughs> like, you know, where did the love connection that uh, I think the love connection was always there, but I worked for him for 10 years before we started dating. Um, I worked in his Vegas salon for a bit, came back to San Diego. Um, but yeah, there's always been like a chemistry between Robert and I, but I have, I mean, he has chemistry with a lot of people, I think, cause he's dynamic and he's charismatic and people want to be around him. 
So, but I feel very lucky that he wanted to be around me. <laughs> Aww. Aww. All right. Now that, that was it. Now back to Mary. <laughs> Not back to Mary. Right. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I love was... it. I love him. I fell in love with him and that was it for me. I, I get it, man. I got fell in love with him too. I know, right? I, and I don't get Those to marry baby him. blue eyes, you don't. That's He's already right. married to me. <laughs> I put a, I put a ring on it. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I forget where we were. Where were we? Visionary of the salon. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah, the Mevo, the Mevo two, and the and the and the moving the um and moving the the the, the, the portable stations around and stuff. Pull together, Corey. Yeah, I know, right? It's crazy. Right. It's um, crazy talk. So do you guys like sit around and just talk about, you know, how you can make a better experience? Yeah, we talk about, we are workaholics collectively. <laughs> we, I'm sure he would say the same thing, but we love it. So it's one, it's, it's okay. Like neither of us are mad at each other for it. And we do, we talk about the salon a lot. We talk about, <clears throat> excuse me, shows a lot. I mean, in the salon now, like we have wash houses and in our wash house it's an enclosed room and we shampoo in the dark oh. so it's all about the head and neck massage and making sure the guest has that time to decompress so I think Robert's visionary idea was when he decided like his first salon was called wash house because he wanted to make a bigger deal about the shampoo experience mm -hmm. because you know when guests come into your salon they expect that especially coming into a salon that looks the way ours does or pretty much any salon you go to a salon whether you're paying five dollars or you're paying 500 you still expect to get a good haircut and color mm -hmm. you're not going in there thinking i bet this is gonna suck <laughs> you know what i mean like that's yeah. the expectation True. it's like when you go into a restaurant you're not thinking i think that's gonna suck let me go here you think this is gonna be great i'm expecting great food but it's all the other things that you wrap around it that people don't expect and when you surprise them i think that gets them talking about it so our wash house is amazing people are always like flabbergasted by it because it's dimly lit we have like candles we have a different type of music uh we actually have 11 sinks we have one side that has seven sinks eight sinks and one that has three and it's just comfortable and we use warm dry towels on their neck when they lean mm -hmm. back in the sink we have hot wet towels if we need to do uh conditioning treatments at the sink we do um, we use Maverick skin tonic on the gentlemen's faces when we do a second shampoo after they cut their hair. So that rinses out all the itchy bits. There's like a lot of little extras that go with it. Even we have our blow dryers from free stylists that come down from the ceiling. Yeah. So that's visionary on top of it. So all of this stuff like with the call center and being mobile and chairside checkout and texting for your car for valet is like the next step of all that visionary service, type right? of stuff because it's what else can you do? So Be I think I'm going to fly 3,000 miles for a haircut. You I'm should. Now, right? yeah. You should. I did. Next time. <laughs> <laughs> I dare you. Maybe I can marry him. <laughs> I just have to fly 3,000 miles for a haircut. You <laughs> cannot marry him. We have laws against that. He is already currently occupied. <laughs> is, is everybody trained uh, in all the systems? Yes. So part of hiring um, from out of state or right out of beauty school everyone starts as a rising star everyone's path is different if Corey if you're super fast and you're already like oh I got this and you get mm -hmm. it really quick but Tony you're like oh I need more time I've never why, even helped why do I got to be the slow one <laughs> damn sorry <laughs> Tony if you're really fast and you get it super quick <laughs> yeah. and Corey you're not quite as fast so you you know sometimes we let somebody can start taking guests as soon as two weeks after working with us as, as starting oh, wow. as a rising star. Now they won't take a brand new guest or a walk in, but if you have somebody that's already like right out of beauty school and you have your clients from beauty school and they're calling and they want to come in and see you, of course you can take those guests here and right. then you're underneath all of our mentorship. So, but we do, yeah, we have a pretty intense training program. Our rising stars have to get certified to get, to give a shampoo experience they have mm. to get shampooed by 10 of us to give 10 different experiences to them. And then they have to shampoo at least 10 of us that approve them. 10 wow. approved. So if it's not 10 approved and you have to keep working on it, Until then you, get 10 approved? you have to get 10 approved. So I would just say that, that it was terrible. Do it again. I know. Just get enough, just get enough <laughs> One of our newest rising stars was like, this is the best day of my life. I got shampooed four times. She was like, this is great. I was like, get back to work. But it was awesome. Like she was like, oh my God, I learned so much and it felt amazing. So yeah. And then, you know, we just go through all the stuff and 
kind of the responsibility of training the rising stars is on all of us as stylists mm-hmm. because if they're going to help work with us and they're going to help do blow dries and do color takedowns like we have to train them so sure. we try to keep a string of continuity while still allowing everybody to have their own individuality how many rising stars do you have? well first of all how many stylists do you have in the salon and then how many rising stars currently, are you training at any point currently we have a 24 stylists four of those stylists are kind of in transition of they're a rising star but they're also taking guests Mm -hmm. so what we do is once they go from a rising star they get one day on the floor so they are free to book that as much as they can once they and robert does the coaching with numbers and once they have those good scores they get to have an and they're building and keeping their guests and they can have another day so there's a lot of like labor laws and things like that. I don't want to just put them on the floor and be like, oh, you have one client a week. Right. So when they're not being a stylist, then on the other days, they're still being a rising star. And on those days, they could maybe be assisting somebody who's super busy in the salon and it's very like purposeful assisting where they're really getting like basically an education class right. that day. And so like, is that on rotation? Like if they were to, if, if, if Mary was the very busy person, like they would, they would assist you one day or is this an assistant you have all the time? Nope. It's, it rotates through. And, um, we have one girl, Tiffany, she does really well. She's super booked. She did, she's done a great job of building her clientele. So we sort of just started rolling that out with her. And so she likes to have somebody like for the whole week so she can kind of, you know, you, you can coach them. So she'll start in the morning and she'll do a powwow with them in the morning talk with them about what's to come in the day, what she expects of them. Then they all work together, coach through like kind of bullet coaching throughout the day. Right. But then if you can do two or three or four days together with the same person, then you kind of get to say like, Oh yeah, I remember that from yesterday. I've learned from it. Right, I'm growing right, and right. kind of have that. So, but we try to rotate people through. So everybody gets a chance to work with the stylists that are super busy. So then you're, especially as the, the rising star grows mm-hmm. and starts taking their own guests then they can put two and two together a little bit more of like, oh, you're using this formula. Why? Why are you mixing that? Oh, I had a guest yesterday that had the same hair. I would. Oh, I should have done that. Right. So right, they can right, kind right. of put it together more and make it more personalized to them. That's what brilliant. I think. It is really right. Yeah. I mean, it's a, so much thought and depth into detail. I'm like, I'm. I mean, it's a lot of it's a lot of work. You gotta, you know what I mean. You gotta work sure. at it and stay on top of it and. You but, mean from your position you have to or from their position they have to work and stay I on top think of in, it? in general, like our stylists, <clears throat> our stylists have to, everybody, our stylists have to put a lot mm. of work into it because you're busy and ultimately our job is to serve the guest. Sure. But we're also teaching somebody else like what's going on, what to do, how to be in a salon. The great thing for us is that the way Robert started his salon, that's kind of like guests learn about that very quickly and they know going into it. And we have so many guests that even still to this day, guests that come to the salon that used to see Robert when he first started in San Diego, maybe he was a $25 hair cutter and they (laughs) still come to the salon this many years later. Sometimes they still see Robert. Sometimes they see other people trickle through the salons, but they know the concept of the salon and they like it. And so I think that when as you're, I think the guests enjoy when their stylist is sharing with a rising star, it makes the stylist really seem like they know what they're doing Mm -hmm. and the client feels great about that. So it's kind of a cool dynamic, but you know, you got to be on point. Isn't, isn't, isn't there a saying that the best way to learn is to be a teacher? So it doesn't kind of give them the opportunity for that as well. Yeah. It's great. That's pretty cool. Yeah. They say you learn more than this, than the student, right? Yeah. Definitely. Certainly about yourself. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So, um, with this program, with the like Rising Star program, what's your turnover? I mean, do you get a lot of turnover? Do you get a, a lot of people? I mean, there's some turnover, obviously. but there, Yeah, there's some turnover in the industry, but I don't feel like we get that much. I feel like people pretty much stick around. I think the biggest turnover we get is because we have so many people that come from out of state mm-hmm. when they go, like if they choose to go back to their hometown. Like homesick, like kind of relocate, Or like they've gotten married and had kids and then they want to go back to like be closer to their parents or you know what I mean? Stuff like that. But I don't know. I don't feel like we have too much turnover uh, as far as rising stars go. Of course, there's always like I kind of had loosely mentioned in um, in California, there's all these crazy labor laws and commissions illegal. You have to do an hourly rate. Yeah, I don't understand any of that. We're not even going to get into it. It'd be a whole long (laughs) thing. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot. So, and then there's also the difference between working in a team salon and people that want to go out on their own and, you know, be independent contractors mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So I do think that there is a point sometimes when people get to a certain level when they decide they want to become independent or whatever. But for my personal, for me, that is, I need to work with a team. 
I don't want, for me, I don't want to be an independent contractor. I'm not great at paying my taxes. I like when the government takes it out automatically. So I'm like, uh uh-uh. I can't do it. And I I just, I don't love to work by myself. I like to be surrounded by a team. I like to ask, collaborate on formulas, collaborate on haircuts. I like the, the added help from the team. If you, you know, come into work and it's not the best day of your life, they help make it the best day of your life and help make it the best day of your guest life. You know, the guest doesn't need to know that you're like, I want to poke my eyes out right now. (laughs) You know, it's, it's good. They alleviate some of that. The rising stars alleviate some of that because they help you know, you kind of can like help create that magic. So that's cool that the uh, Rise of Stars, they get to, to work with the experienced hairdressers. And so, so does that help the experienced hairdressers actually make more money? Or, I mean, does, do they get to actually get hands on to, to take on more clients? I mean, how does that work? Yeah, so every stylist is different. Everyone likes to be booked differently. But yeah, of course, if you have somebody who is I'm specifically going to shampoo for you and blow dry your guests for you. That makes your day go a lot quicker. So it goes quicker. You can do more. So rather than booking out time for a blow dry and finishing time, you could be doing another color while your rising star, your new talent person, your partner in crime for that day is doing a blowout for you. Finishing with, you know, the take home recommendations and all of that stuff. So yeah, they make everything a lot easier. But but in but in the real world kind of situation, if you don't know who, like if you you know someone pre books like six weeks or something, you know ahead of time, and you don't really know who's going to finish it, is is that that would kind of make me a little anxious. nervous, too, anxious, yeah. I feel like well, you would know, you would know because you work with these people in the salon. But it's a rotation of like four people. I mean, out of the four people, there's got to be people that finish better than others, yeah? Oh, yeah. Well, you would... you And we also use... We have a second salon in San Diego that's a new talent salon. So sometimes we'll have that new talent stylist. Maybe they've been there six months. Maybe mm-hmm. they've been there a year. We'll have them come down for a day or two days. And so they've already... They're experienced. You know, you're not going to put the brand new person that doesn't... is not even certified to shampoo on blow drying or anything sure, like that. Sure, so... Sure. But our salon atmosphere is a team atmosphere anyway. So even like the other day, I shampooed for one of our new talent stylists. She had two guests there and I was already done for the day, but she was still finishing a blowout and had another one waiting. And so I was like, yeah, she's like, oh my God, you'll do that for me. I'm like, well, yeah, what's the alternative? Make her wait. Yeah, right. You know, so yeah. yeah, So we all like, that's the part that for me that I love is that we can all do that. But yeah, it helps you do more. It helps you go faster. If I'm doing a full highlight that by myself would take me an hour and 15 minutes. If someone passing me foils can make it take 45 minutes, that means her hair is spending more time processing than me applying, you know? Yeah, yeah. So we can get me there a little bit quicker. That's cool that everybody's uh, kind of helping each other. You know what I mean? Nobody feels above the other. I mean, they're all kind of hands in together. You have to. You have to. That's pretty cool. So, um... What do your days look like? Like, how, how, how much you taking? <laughs> taking it all. Taking it all. No, I um. So I always have like my goal for myself is a thousand dollars a day. Mm-hmm. Just my personal goal, not for anyone else. But in our salon, we have goals of like an average ticket. So it doesn't really matter what your necessarily what your haircut price is. Mm-hmm. It's kind of more about the bundle of it. So. I really try to, and most of my clients, like I have a 2.1 surface service ratio, which means most of my guests get two services. So I'm not just having somebody come in for a what, color. What, what, so what defines a service? So in our salon, there's a color, a color highlight, a highlight by itself, a haircut, conditioning treatment. So just so a conditioning treatment would count as a service. Yes. And, okay, cool. Cause it's an upgrade and you're charging for it. a toner would be an extra service. Uh, Even if you do a color plus a highlight rather than just doing somebody's base touch up every four weeks, you do that, that's one price, that's one service. Mm -hmm. But the way that I can add on to my ticket with that is to upgrade to a treatment or if I upgrade her to some highlights, more of those services I'm adding on or trim it or treat it. If I add on a haircut to that, then I'm getting the two services. Of course, it would be great to get three services every time, but more and more of my guests are non-pigmented. So they're coming in like three and four weeks for that touch up. So they're not most people aren't going to get a haircut every three weeks unless they're a gentleman. Sure. So yeah. So I shoot in our salon, it's 1.5 to stay. So for every, every 10, every 10 guests that you see five are getting a second service. So yeah. 
So that's like kind of our goal as a team. But of course, obviously you can't stay that way. Like Stephanie Kachelski is like a 3.0. Everybody gets cut color and style no matter what. <laughs> Makes me so mad because I'm at a 2.1 and I need to get that 0.9 up there. So obviously that helps because when you're adding on a $20, $25 treatment or a $50 um, demi overlay, you're getting additional dollars in your pocket. So sure. Yeah. So what Robert was mentioning earlier that it was just before we left to go away for a month and do a show. And I did have my highest day. I didn't do extensions or anything like that, but I had a $1,900 day and I had done $230 in take home, which the percentage isn't that great because it was like less than 10% in take home, but it was still a great score because my total was so high. Sure. So, and my average ticket was at like 225. Wow. So, I mean, I worked my butt off. I was dead at the end of the day and I did have rising star help and it was amazing. And I, you know, it was just great to having nobody really shamp nobody really blue, blue dry hair for me, but the rising stars definitely shampooed for me and took care of doing the treatments and making sure that was all taken care of. So that was wonderful. How pissed were you that you didn't make it to two K? Oh my God, you have no idea. <laughs> There's times where I'll do like nine ninety five, oh. and I'm like, really? How did I get to nine ninety five? You're just like one more bang trim. But that is my bad because I know in the morning if I add up what's on my schedule, uh -huh. I can see what else I can do to make myself hit my goal. So that day I knew I was going to have a stellar day, but I did have a guest that was only scheduled for a haircut and then she ended up getting a color plus a highlight. What? And I, I was able to squeeze her in because I had help. Sure. You know, I was able to make it happen and not sacrifice her service and the quality of her service for the end result of her hair. And, and everybody else's service. Yeah, and everybody right. was cool because I was, you know, I was able to, I let her know, like, I can absolutely do this for you. She comes down from Los Angeles to see me. But, you know, I have to have, Juan's going to shampoo you. He's probably going to start your blow dry. We're going to have to, like, work this out. But, yeah, it was great. I would love, like, my goal for myself daily is a thousand a day, but I would love to like move it up to 1500 because I think I can do it. Yeah. Uh, we just recently had like a overall raise in the salon for all of like we do elements. We have five elements of hairdressers. So it's all based on red, which is reputation, experience and demand. So based off of that, we get raises to raise our prices. So that's the criteria to raise your prices. Yeah. Like, if you don't have a great reputation and you have no guests and you feel like you're not making any money, then there's no reason to give you a raise if you're, nobody's calling for you. Or, what did Reggie used to say? You want a raise? Oh, you want a raise? Take another client. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Upgrade the ones you have. Right. That's it. Exactly. Give exactly. them a treatment. Like, it's so funny because sometimes Robert's like, is it that nobody has dry hair? No one's hair is dry. <laughs> I don't understand. We only did three treatments. Nobody's hair is dry in San Diego. We're like, yes, their hair is dry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened, <laughs> but it's true though. Like sometimes as stylists, I think we forget and he does put a lot of things into play in the salon that are like systems that are put there so that we can't fail. Like even, I think he talked about this on your last podcast that you guys did with him, but we have on every station, the future reservation. So, um, I make those for us and sometimes I'll use like a Paul Mitchell photo of something great that we have, like whatever the newest is, but I also get pictures of the team the hair that the team does from their Instagram pages and then I can plug them, but it'll say, you know, well, great hair doesn't happen by accident. It happens by appointment. And then it'll say four, six, eight, 10 and 12. And then from that day, it'll have what the date is in four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, 10 weeks and 12 weeks. So when the guest sits down and you're doing your consultation, they're seeing that and they're like, Oh my God, six weeks is October this. Oh God, I have a wedding that weekend or I have a w wedding the weekend before I should come in in five weeks. So it really helps with pre-booking and really helps that conversation because I think a lot of times we see our guests and we're excited to chat with them and catch up and we forget about like what we're really the there business, to do, which is business. to serve them and the business yeah. of that. And obviously, if we set ourselves up to win and we get our books set up, then in six weeks we're booked. We're not wondering if we're going to make enough money. Mm. That helps with the summer lulls too, right? It helps with everything. Yeah. That's you incredible. just know what you're doing then and you're not worried like, oh my God, I don't have this or I don't have that. And you can, you can see it. You see your future. Mm. And so how often do you print those? So I was doing, we did have a miracling situation which had a dry erase. So it was just one picture, always the same, the statement and the four, six, eight, ten, 10 and 12. And then just daily we would write in the date. We, we remodeled the salon a little bit and got different mirrors. So now we do a little frame in front and so I print them weekly so I'll do whatever like the Tuesday through Saturday week is I already can't even remember the date right now so that's embarrassing <laughs> but I'll do the week so say like the 24th through the 29th 
And then on the four weeks, I'll give that date, whatever it is in four weeks from this date to that date. So they know it's right. that week of. So we do it weekly. That's we so have 18 s- stations. That's so smart. 25 yeah. actually, but there's seven that is a barbering one. Oh, you guys do barbering too? Yeah, we have a barbering wall. So we have seven um, really cool red barbering chairs. And it's kind of on like the backside of a wall, like near our wash house. So it's slightly private, even though everybody walks by to go to the wash house, but mm-hmm. it's not like right in the middle of the salon where everybody walking in can see every, see it all. So it's a little bit private. The, the seats are nice. They're big, they're cushy, they're barber seats. We only have two barbers in the salon right now, but it's cool. That's really cool. I'm just blown away and amazed at like what's happened in the last you know few years with barbering. Yeah. You know, it's insane. I don't know if it was just invisible to me or, 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 or if it's just something that's like just catching on like crazy. I don't know. It's I think it amazing. almost went away. And then with social media and the exposure, I think it just blew up. It's incredible, right? What's Who's the guy down in uh, Texas, Tony? Rob the Original. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. That guy's insane. He's an artist. I mean, he does stuff on horses. I, did you see, have you seen like the salt sculpture? I mean, the salt paintings he's done? Yeah. Insane. Yeah. I don't know how he sees it. It's like, it's Dolly like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's just insane. Insane. Crazy. It's so cool. Uh, yeah. I, every time I see that guy work, I'm like, what? And, 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 like you said, he's, he's an artist. You know yeah. what I mean? So I think he could like paint it. Yeah. Like on a, actually like on a canvas also. You know what I mean? Yeah, Not just no, with clippers. Oh, you can't. He'll go buy a dirty, buy a dirty car and you know, how it's covered with dust or, uh, you know, pollen or whatever. And he'll draw like finger draw sculpture uh, or painting inside the from the dust, and it's like what? That's, yeah, yeah, that's insane. That guy's incredible. I can't do that. <laughs> no, I don't see it. But you can do nineteen hundred dollars in a day. That's right. That's what I can need more of those days. Right. Bring it on. Bring, <laughs> Bring it, it on. on. <laughs> Isn't it amazing on those days though? Like you're just firing. Mm-hmm. Like 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 everything is like oh everything's great. Your confidence is so high, and you're like there's not even that 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 instinct in you where you're scared to ask for the up for the upsell. You nope. know, because you get those days where you're like uh, I don't want to ask for the upsells, and but on those days it's like everything's high, and everyone's saying yes, right? Yes. So you have to wonder like is is it me is why they're saying no, or is it or is it really a challenge? You know, but if yeah. I those, those, it, those days when everybody's saying yes, Robert's like man, everybody had dry hair today. That's yes. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yes that is true <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that's awesome mayor thank you so much for joining us and hanging out with us thank you i know i love that you called me mayor my mom calls me mayor oh so mayor. Cute. mayor mayor <laughs> mayor mayor bear did she call you mayor bear or is that no. just, mayor? just mayor just mayor just like mayor. You, you ruined it you went from so <laughs> cute to like creepy <laughs> so. that's why my husband's here right <laughs> He's got his eyes on you guys, right? Oh my God. I'm scared of him. You have no idea. <laughs> Dude, thank you. Thanks thank you so much. This was oh, awesome. Thanks it for really making was. time with us. And, uh, you know, thanks for bringing your husband and hopefully he doesn't beat us up before you leave. He won't. <laughs> right. Thank you. This was a That's pleasure. Awesome. Oh. A pleasure and an honor. So thanks so much. Thanks. Definitely. So, Ms. Mayor Chromies, thank you very, very much for joining us on your day off. Hey, hey, so there it is. Hey, this is a message that um, we've been trying to bring, I don't know, for the last couple of months, actually since we started the podcast. Hey, so if you like the podcast or if you find that it's useful, please, please, please leave us a review, a five-star review on iTunes. Um, leave us a rating and a review. But if you don't like it, forget about it. <laughs> yeah, totally forget about this message. We also want to thank Sarah and Blaine from Pretty Gritty. Uh, Sarah and Blaine, they are a band out of uh, Portland, Oregon, and we just want to thank them very much for allowing us to use their song, Pleased to Meet You, on our podcast. Um, that's cool. I think you can find... Actually, you can. You can find their music on um, on iTunes. Peace and hair grease. <laughs>